Camille Schreier, Miss America 2020 here, and get your lab coats out because today we're gonna do some science. So I thought for my first real science demo video for you guys, I had to go with a classic. I had to choose Elephant's Toothpaste. It is the demonstration that helped me win Miss Virginia and Miss America, and it's my favorite one to do. I'm requested to do it all the time. I travel around to schools and bring this demonstration because it is that much fun. But if you've ever heard me do my demonstration, I always say to not try this at home, but we're at home. So why am I telling you to try it now? Because we're going to use different materials and chemicals than what I used on stage. And I'm gonna show you how to do this in your house. It's such a fun demonstration. It teaches you a lot of really basic scientific concepts. It's fun, it's visual, and it's easy to do. So let's get started. So the first thing that we have to do before we start any type of science is to make sure that we are protected. I have my hair back in a ponytail to keep it off my face. I have my lab coat on and now I need to make sure that I get my safety gloves on and my goggles. So what you're going to need to do elephant's toothpaste at home are just a few simple ingredients. The first thing is hydrogen peroxide. This is from the pharmacy. It is 3% hydrogen peroxide and you can get this really at any pharmacy or grocery store. And when you pick this up, what I want you to notice is that it's in a brown container. And that is for a very special reason. It is because the hydrogen peroxide breaks down with light. So these are basically functioning like blackout curtains in your house. It prevents all of the light from coming in and it keeps it from breaking down so that when you purchase this bottle, you know that it really is 3% hydrogen peroxide. The next thing that you're going to need is dish soap. This is the one that I normally use. You don't have to use this one. You can use any good old dish soap from your house. And this is going to serve a really fun purpose in our demonstration later. We need food coloring because we're gonna color this and make it super fun because science is fun. And I always say that the scientific reason to use food coloring is because it is fun and that is good enough. I also need a pack of yeast, the same one that you would use if you are making bread or pizza dough. And to activate this, we're going to need some warm water. So the first thing that I'm going to do is activate my yeast. And yeast is going to serve a really special purpose in this demonstration. So I have a little beaker here with an entire packet of yeast in it. Just make sure that you've checked the expiration date. Yeast is quite literally a living organism. And so we wanna make sure that it's still alive and ready to go. What we're going to do to make this yeast wake up is to add some warm water. And because yeast is alive, we wanna make sure that we don't kill it. And we need to wake it up, but we don't wanna burn it. So I'm going to use this little kitchen thermometer and take the temperature of my water. I wanna make sure that my water isn't too hot to make sure that it doesn't kill the yeast. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pour about a half of a cup of water into my dry yeast. I'm gonna take a moment just to swirl that around. Once my yeast is nice and mixed with the warm water, I'm going to just set it aside for a few minutes while I finish setting up, just to give it some time to wake up and warm up and be ready to do its job later. What I have here is a 500 milliliter graduated cylinder. You don't have to use a graduated cylinder if you don't have one lying around in your house like I do. Um, you can also use a tall glass or really any kind of glassware that you have in your home. Having it tall and skinny helps the elephant's toothpaste come out a little nicer. So I would definitely recommend picking a piece of glassware that was tall and thin. What I'm going to do now is take my hydrogen peroxide and pour one cup of hydrogen peroxide into my graduated cylinder. I'm actually really impressed that I got that in there without spilling it all over myself, but that is part of the reason why we wear gloves and goggles. If you know what the chemical formula is for hydrogen peroxide, shout it out now. It's H2O2. Sounds a lot like water, right? Which is H2O. It has an extra oxygen on there. And so when hydrogen peroxide breaks down, one of the oxygen actually goes away and it's released into the air as oxygen gas and then we're left with water in our flask. And so when oxygen gas comes out of a solution, it sounds something like bubbles, right? And it would be really fun if we could trap those gases and be able to see them, which is why we use dish soap. So I'm going to pour a big squirt of dish soap into my graduated cylinder. And it's a really good visual indicator so we can actually see those gases being formed. But now is the best part of the whole day. 
we get to add food coloring. I am going to pick pink for now because I like pink and it matches my goggles. I put about five drops of pink food coloring in there. I like to use a fun color. You can choose whatever color you like. Okay, before we do this, we have to do a quick rundown of the science of what is happening behind the elephant's toothpaste demonstration. So again, in my larger graduated cylinder, I have a cup of 3% hydrogen peroxide from the pharmacy, a big squirt of dish soap, and some food coloring that I'm going to make sure I swirl up and have all ready and mixed. We warmed up our yeast at the beginning of this video. We put an entire packet of yeast with about a half of a cup of warm but not too hot water. And now it's had some time to rest and really sit and get really mixed and awake. We talked about hydrogen peroxide being H2O2. And what we're going to do through this reaction is to break down the hydrogen peroxide. And we're going to use something called a catalyst. Our yeast that we prepared before is the catalyst that we're going to use. And why does yeast break down hydrogen peroxide? Yeast has something called an enzyme in it. We have enzymes in our body. Enzymes are in every living thing around us, including yeast. And the particular enzyme in the yeast that we are looking for is called catalase. The catalase in the yeast breaks down hydrogen peroxide. It's its natural function. It's specifically designed to speed up the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide. We have catalase in our body so if you've ever poured hydrogen peroxide on an, a cut and you see those bubbles form, it's because the catalase in our body is designed to break down hydrogen peroxide. And that catalase is going to break off one of the oxygens of the H2O2. It's going to form water, left as H2O, oxygen gas that's going to bubble out of our solution, and a little bit of heat. Because when we break or form chemical bonds, you will see heat released. Okay guys, it is the moment of truth. I want you to help me count this down. Hopefully this won't be too messy. Let's count down from 10. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Whoa, look at how cool this is. There's a little bit of heat coming off of the top. If you touched this, it would be warm, not hot. But I want you to watch all of these bubbles. So all of these bubbles are formed from the oxygen that is being released from the hydrogen peroxide that was in that graduated cylinder. Our yeast worked to break that all down, and now we're left with this wonderful purple foam. So I am going to clean this all up and then I am going to show you a couple different variations of elephant's toothpaste and show you the difference between this elephant's toothpaste and the one that I did on stage at Miss America. Okay guys, I hope that was super fun for you. We have just ended our you can try this at home portion of the video, but we're not done yet. I want to show you a little bit of how the reaction that we just did is different than the one that I performed at Miss America. So the key to designing a good experiment is changing one variable at a time. And so we're going to do two more elephant's toothpaste demonstrations, but we're going to change one thing in each of them. So in this graduated cylinder, we have exactly the same hydrogen peroxide that we used in the first demonstration. The one from the pharmacy, it's 3%. In this flask, we have the hydrogen peroxide that I used at Miss America. It's 35%. That is almost 12 times stronger than this hydrogen peroxide. I wanna ask you a question. When I put these up to each other, do they look the same? I think they look almost identical. And that's the scary part about chemicals. And that's why we have to be so cautious and label things and we have to know what we are using. I'm going to use these two glasses to show you visually the difference in the concentration between these two hydrogen peroxides. So watch this. So we're going to say that this is our 3% hydrogen peroxide. I put one drop in there. This one is 12 times stronger. So if I put one drop of dye in this cup, I'm gonna put 12 in here. I'm gonna stir these up with a straw. So I want you to look at the difference between this cup and this cup. 
This is exactly the proportion of how much stronger this clear liquid is than this clear liquid. So I told you, a good experiment changes one thing at a time. We're going to use the same hydrogen peroxide, but we're not gonna use yeast this time. What I used at Miss America is a chemical catalyst called potassium iodide. This is a super saturated solution of potassium iodide, which means that I have to make this solution in a very special way that puts more potassium iodide in the solution than it's supposed to have. It's very concentrated, and this, instead of being a biological catalyst like yeast is, this is a chemical catalyst. It works in the same way it breaks down that hydrogen peroxide by chopping an oxygen off of the end of it. And it's going to do the same thing as yeast, but it's a little bit stronger. So we're going to use the same hydrogen peroxide and a different catalyst, and let's see what happens. Okay, same thing as last time, 3% hydrogen peroxide, some dish soap, some food coloring, but instead of yeast, I'm going to try potassium iodide. I have about 20 milliliters here. Let's see what happens. Hmm. So this one is definitely slower. The first thing that I notice about this one is the color. You noticed I put purple or pink food coloring in there, but it came out red. My catalyst that I used is potassium iodide. And if you think about iodine in the pharmacy, what color is it? It's kind of that rusty brown color. And that's what we see here. And that's coming from that iodine that's being used from my catalyst, which is making this a different color than what we had originally tried for. So not a lot has changed here. We did use a stronger chemical catalyst versus a biological catalyst. They worked about the same, but I think it would be a lot more fun if we did it with my concentrated hydrogen peroxide. So let's try that one. What I want you to think about when I do this one is that every molecule of hydrogen peroxide in the solution, this one has much more than this one. Every time one of those molecules loses an oxygen, it forms more gas. More gas, more bubbles. So keep that in mind when I do this one. There's probably going to be more heat released in this demonstration than this one. That's my hypothesis. We'll figure that out when we try it. So I had a few reasons why I chose this demonstration at Miss America. I never thought I could compete for Miss America because I didn't have a traditional performing talent. But I loved science my whole life. And so I really wanted to find a way to combine the talents that I did have and the passions that I had with something that I could perform on stage. And so I was really inspired by Miss Vermont 2016, Elena Westcom, who brought this same demonstration to the Miss America stage. And she became a mentor for me through this process when I was deciding to do this at my local competition and then through Miss Virginia and Miss America. And I am so grateful that I did something that was true to who I am because throughout all of this process as Miss America, my biggest message is to just be yourself. If you're a nerdy science girl like me, then do that. If you're a dancer for your entire life, then do that. If you're a talented, passionate singer, then do that. But don't do something just because someone else did. The other reason I chose this demonstration is a little bit of what we're doing today. It's very easy to adapt to different situations. And I knew that when I was going to Miss America or Miss Virginia, it needed to be entertaining, it needed to be big, and everyone needed to be able to see it from the back of the room. And with Elephant's Toothpaste, if you use different volumes, different concentrations, you can make this demonstration very large and very exciting and really entertaining for the audience. But then when I go to schools during my year, I can bring it down a notch. Okay guys, we're going to do this one last time using the exact same chemicals that I used at Miss America and Miss Virginia. So what's the difference between this one and this one? Look at these two cups in the front. This one is 12 times stronger than this one. The hydrogen peroxide is much more concentrated, which means that there are a lot more of the hydrogen peroxide molecules in this graduated cylinder than there were in this one. So I think that it's going to create a lot more gas than this one will, and hopefully we're going to make more bubbles. So I have my food coloring, my dish soap, and my hydrogen peroxide in this flask, 
and I'm going to use my chemical catalyst, potassium iodide, same one I used at Miss America and Miss Virginia, rather than yeast. The only thing that we are changing between these two is the concentration of our hydrogen peroxide. So remember that, check out my cups in the front to remind you how much stronger this one is than that graduated cylinder. So take a guess. What do you think is going to change? Let's try it out. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. I got it on my hand because it's going to fall on the floor. Okay guys, huge difference. I mean, seriously, this is super hot and it's getting all over the place. This is the reason why I say don't try this at home. Can you see the steam coming off of this? It is just wild. So there is so much more hydrogen peroxide in that flask than the other one that it just exploded. So a couple observations from this one. This one is really hot, really big. It shot out a lot faster than this one. The color is pretty similar. We still have that kind of rusty brown color from the potassium iodide that I used. But this one feels like a whole different reaction. This is because I used stronger chemicals. It's the same concept. Quite literally, the exact same reaction happened. The hydrogen peroxide is breaking down. It is the catalytic decomposition of hydrogen peroxide in both cases. It just matters how much there is and how quickly it breaks down to cause that big of a difference. So guys, I hope that you thought that was really fun. I'm so excited to be able to share this demonstration with you. And I hope that you tried that one from the beginning of our video at home. And if you do, please make sure to take a picture or a video and tag me in it on Instagram or Facebook. You can find me at Camille Schreier and make sure to give Miss America a tag too, at Miss America.